This, oh. this, this is, ex did you ever have any of these ones? Uh, no. Because this is exactly what I started with. Three machine, nine, 10. This is actually what I started editing. And it's funny, it just comes back straight away. <laughs> I've literally not touched it in about 20 years. Wow. What were you editing on? I mean, what, what kind of films? Well, the first thing I ever cut, actually, Joe Carter, Unstoppable Sex Machine. Oh, no. So it's a band, and I did their concert video, and then I realised that actually wow. editing's quite easy. But well, I remember these. We used to have these at um, GHA when I worked there, which were doing corporates. Well, these are what Beta SX is. Did you have SX? Um, yeah, well, we had actually we had Umatic and VHS. But, but I definitely had B to SXs, but I'm wondering whether they were at, whether it was at that corporate company or um, one of the other offline facilities. Hang on, let's see if I can. There's a key there. Because you were offline, weren't you? Yeah. Full uh, yeah, 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 that's true. But we did have, um, oh, we online at the corporate company, GHA, but I can't remember exactly what gear we had. I didn't do it. I, right, it's going to take me a little while. I don't even know what I'm looking at there. That is... I'm, I'm not even sure what... This is terrible. I'm not even sure what I'm monitoring. Hold on. What's funny is the, the size of the screens as well. They're all enormous, aren't they? Compared to, Well, we still get those in the offline suite. I don't know if you have them. No. Well, I've might have been editing at home on my laptop for... <laughs> for quite some time. Because uh, I'm still, so we still get some of these. They still, you? You know, some of the facility companies still have them. Yeah. So I'm just chucking in an SP. So we've got some sound coming from somewhere. I really, I mean, you've kind of put us on the spot here because I've never used this mixer. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but also I don't know the setup at all. So I'm kind of going, why is that playing? I'm not asking it to play. Is that? And working out which is controlling what. But I've um, stuck an SP tape into one of the machines. So we've got an SX, which the SX is we used at Big Brother, and these are kind of like the, the poor man's version of the Digi Beta. And then we've got the good old SP tape. And I remember the SPs coming in, because I don't think you've got one here, but I used to work on one inch, which is what I started oh, okay. off on, on the three machines. And I was an assistant editor when the... Uh, SPs came in, um, and they were a revelation to us. It's all very, very exciting. <laughs> um, it was so much easier. And I was a terrible assistant. I used to fall asleep all the time. I'd be reading the paper, and then people, all, these, all the editors would be furious with me because they'd have to come up and sort it out themselves. <laughs> Let's see what we've got. So we've got. OK, so player one on that monitor, player two on that monitor. Well, this says player two, but I think that's the, because I'm holding the, that's the record button. So that's the record monitor down. Player one, I can see, and then player two actually says there's tape out on this one, you might, if you can see that down there. So basically, this isn't actually set up properly. I'd get an engine, this is where I call the engineers in. <laughs> so I can't do anything apart from, there's no caption generator, about the best I can manage would be to kind of try and see if I can do a mix through. We've got a key going up. And I can see if I can get a mix through to a colour background. There we go, that's about, oh, we can even do, there we go, beautiful uh -huh. white. So did you only use the 910? Oh no, I don't know, I, I'm not one for remembering all the gear that I worked on, to be honest. I did, I, I've worked on, um, we just, I did, you know, quite a lot of tape to tape, that's all I remember. And, or, you know, just, it's that whole thing about the timing, like playing things and being able to preview them and then go for it and having to kind of be, make those decisions and sort of stick with them that we don't have to do now. We can just yeah. play around. Well, I remember that sort of discipline. I, I, I quite liked it, actually. I did. I mean, it's a lot of fun. Because you were always... Um, and then you just had to... Sort of, people had to make their minds up. They didn't, they tried, they didn't shoot too much. You it know. had to be really disciplined, that's yeah. the thing, is they knew every, t every single time. So were you, when you were editing, would you yeah. have a director working with you? Um, sometimes. My first, well, first I went to college, um, L London College of Printing, and I did uh, 
photography, film and TV there. Mm. So we were editing on film mm. and um, we were editing um, on tape as well, actually. We edited on tape, VHS, I think, tape to tape. Mm. And so, um, and then I, then I went to this corporate company and I worked there for three years and we were actually making our own films by then. So, um, well, I mean, I would literally produce, direct and edit them. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, films about, I don't know, TNT and Avis and, and um, so that was quite good, and that was that was umatic editing. But you know, I'm I'm just it's the same with like the avids that I work on now. Um, basically, you know, just get in front of a machine and just get on with it, don't you? The the yeah. uh, at the time I I just got used to whatever machine I had, and I, obviously we had I had the same equipment for three years. Um, well, as I say, this is what I mean. I would do all nighters on this. I was working all the time at that point. So I would be starting working through the day and then I'd carry on working through the night doing other projects with other people. I was surviving on coffee and caffeine pills. <laughs> Not a way to... I had to stop caffeine, coffee for about two years because I became sort of too edgy in too many late-nighters. <laughs> um, but it was with this. It was all with this, exactly this setup. Wow. I haven't touched the BVE 910, the Sony BVE 910, I swear, in 23 years. So, um, and it's like it was yesterday. I mean, I struggled to do some of it, to go back and go, I mean, all the edit list management, but I reckon give me about an hour and I'd almost be back to where I was. <laughs> but this is really simple. I mean, we used to have a much bigger one. The, the bigger version is the, the 9100, and that was quite full on. Um, and this is a tiny little mixer. So we'd have a, you know, it'd be probably about three times the size of this. Um, and we do multi-level stuff. So, you know, yeah. layer upon layer. And that's all the stuff that you go, now, with an Avid, it's so much easier. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. So you said you were doing pop promos. Uh, we did pop videos. We did the biggest nightmare. We used to do the Italian football. Mm -hmm. And so with the Italian football, you'd be running three machines. So we'd have a record deck, probably Digibeta. Yeah. Actually, maybe, no, BSP. Mm -hmm. And we would be using... You get four channels on the SP, mm -hmm. and then we'd have to bounce the audio because we'd have to have voiceover, Atmos, the commentary, the sound effects from the football, and you'd be mixing all of these at the same time. Yeah. And you need to mix them through and obviously make it seamless, like yeah. you do on an Avid now. Um, but you've only got two machines to play with. And we'd have these, and we'd also have something called a bell box that we could lay off the audio onto. Yeah. Um, and you'd be running all of those at the same time. And it was a complete mind scramble, <laughs> trying to keep track of it all. And you'd be starting and stopping and doing it all over again. It wasn't, it was, you were sort of pushing the equipment right to the very limit of what you could do. Yeah. And now it's the sort of thing you can do instantly on Avid. You don't even worry about it. Yeah. It was a lot of fun, but it was, you couldn't come into work with a hangover. Why? And I remember having one of these. We uh, went off and worked uh, for MTV in the MTV Music Awards in Stockholm, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, and they'd set one of these up, but they never got it working properly. So we actually couldn't do any mixes. Every time you do a mix, you'd get a jump. Um, so we could only cut every single time. It was like the most basic editing ever. It's not fun. Yeah, but a mix can get you out of a jam. Uh, <laughs> well, it used to be yeah. able to anyway. <laughs> They went really out of fashion, didn't they? Well, MTV were all cuts anyway most of the time, so yeah. you'd be fine. But, uh, yeah. Oh, it was great, actually. Oh, look. I can go back and go. That's right. Oh, the transition set, link. Set transition links and things like that. And then you go, auto transition. Oh, hang on. Auto transition there. And is it that one? So that would be the mix between two shots. Yeah. And, and that would be... The speed at which it would You wouldn't, mix. You wouldn't have any of that, would you, in the offline? There's nothing. Because um, you could literally just cut, is what you yeah, do. Yeah. Um, I can't get it. Hang on. I can't remember how we used to do our mixes. I'll probably speak to there we go. 48 the guys and they'll go, oh, you, you were on an online suite or something. But we, I mean, I wasn't. But um, but uh, I, I do remember doing mixes, so I didn't you, think to, to I, give them a call and check what the gear was. We had, before I started working in facilities company, they had a small machine-to-machine -machine offline edit there using Umatic. Yeah. 
And I think they might have had a small mixer. Yeah. But I know that um, one of the editors I used to, do you know Jake Bernard? Um, no. One of the editors, I, he was an offline editor, and I think he would just be doing cuts on Umatic, because that's all they could do. Yeah, yeah. And all, you know, you'd be, I imagine you'd have to go... Well, right, that's well, right, because we used to do so much in the online suite as well. That's yeah. why we just like, plan it out, and then um, you do it in... You know, in the online. So I think online in those days, actually, you made a lot more changes in the online. Like, yeah. you know, now it'd be unheard of, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. It to, be... to move a, to, to change a frame. Because in those days, you kind of sort of set it out, and then in the online, you'd be going, oh, you know, we, we, I want a bit of graphics there, and I want to the dissolve it, there. It wouldn't be frame accurate, would it? Um, well, they were close. Yeah. Um, that's the thing. I mean, oh, the time because I know the time code readers came in later, didn't they? When you'd get the EDL. Yes. Uh, Actually, that's the other thing, of course. Yeah, we were exactly edit right. Edit decision list. <laughs> well, yeah, edit decision list. And once we, you get it, that's right. Often they do machine to machine edits and you just have a handwritten log. Yeah, that's and right. And th that's, that's, yes, how, that's I how I started. Right. Burnt in time code. Yeah. Burnt we thought about burnt in time code. And then you'd be going through, which have you got on here? Yeah. Um, that's right, you'd go through and literally write every single yeah, shot down. I've forgotten all about that. That's exactly how I started because yeah. the EDL for the Carter um, concert video all the time code had screwed up. And so there was no, I had to eye match every single shot. Oh, wow. Um, from the offline. And I went, oh, this is actually not as hard as it looks. Yeah. They sort of set me off as an assistant editor to go and do it. And I was like, I can do this. <sighs> so, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I used to do, because this is more my field than yours, isn't it? Mm. Um, we'd be doing a lot more promo stuff and you would have to be very, very careful about things. I mean, I, I remember specifically as an assistant editor, and I was doing the captions, and you know, assistant editor, you look after the machines, but I was also doing the caption generator, which was the A72 then. And I spelled independent wrong. And no one noticed until about two hours later when we were about five layers deep into a multi-layer effect, and we had to go back and do the same, do it all over again. And the producer and the editor both had to go for a little walk and calm down. <laughs> we had to do it all over again. So. Yeah, you had to be really, really careful. And of course, I'd still be careful. I still have to be double care doubly, still have to double check on how you'd spell independent now. <laughs> you're just like, okay. You've got a complex. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For that one word, you're like, I can't believe I got it wrong. And I pride myself on my spelling as well. <laughs> so yeah, that was painful. Ah, oh, there you go. But I, I like it. slow mix to black. <laughs> no heart wipe. Oh, no, no heart wipe. It's so funny. Oh, and of course it's got chroma key on it. And that was the thing about the pop promos as well at the time, you know, really a uh, lot, oh. lot of effects. Yeah. Lot of simple, well. It's a shame I can't show you. It's like. Crude. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I've got so many of like all yeah, on the show reel. Transitions. Got, yeah, lots of transitions and trying to find any way of doing any effect you can. And masks. So you forget now, and I had to do this because again, I've, I built multi layer effects, but do you ever do, you do Animat? Do you use the animator? No. So on Avid now, you can draw around anything you want and you can cut out any shape you want to. Yeah. We had this. We could do a square or a circle. Uh -huh. And that's all we could cut round. And then maybe chroma key if someone had shot it right. But even with the best technology, chroma key was a nightmare. Sure, like them. So yeah, you've got a choice between a square, you can go do a diamond. So obviously you can have the image, the, the second image Playing in the square yeah, or exactly. the diamond. You could have them the both playing. Whatever. But I can change. There you go. And it's coming back straight away. And I can. It's incredible. Then I, I mean, it's fairly. I think it's fairly obvious. But then maybe that it's border. not. Oh, you've changed the width of the border. Which, I can change the colour. I can put a softness on it if you want one. Change the size of it. And let's put. Let's see if I can work out colour on it. There we go. Look at that. A lovely Yay. green. And this is what we. This is what we had to work with. So you put a colour <laughs> in there if you were feeling really special. It'd be nice if we could get it up on the main monitor, wouldn't it? I wonder... No, I'm not sure we can do that. Actually, if I switch that into... Stop it. Can I put it into E to E? Pre-reads... There we go. Yay. That's cool. So what about the other... We can't get the other image. I can get that one. Let's see, that's... Um, well, we're in... Oh, OK. I think they're going to try and test me because someone has switched pre-read on. Can I record on these tapes? Because that was the other thing, so wasn't it striping the tapes? Oh my god! Yeah. And all of that. You yeah, and then that's, I mean, that's the assistant editor's job, and of course we always had to keep a steady 
when I was assistant editor. Yeah, like if you didn't have a tape that was striped and you needed one for Yeah, me. you're in real trouble. Yeah. You're not very popular with the editor. And it's the wrong length. It needs to be the right so length. So basically, if the tape's not striped, I mean, people watching won't know that. If the tape's not striped, you couldn't record onto it. And so you have to record the tape all the way through to lay, lay time code all the way down the tape. Yeah. Um, and then the number of times you'd find someone that hadn't striped a tape, so the editor would be halfway through and then it would just crush out and everything would stop. Yeah, you get to a point and the, the tape had, had got no more black yeah, on it. It's exactly. called black when it's Yeah, uh, black and burst you'd have striped. to put on it. And you'd get there and then it'd be like, oh, mayhem, because you, know, you, <laughs> you could stripe it from there onwards well, you can and then assemble, the time code edit would be on, different. But and, everything uh, slows down. Now, it's possible to do it, but everything becomes much, much slower and you have a very, very grumpy editor. Yeah. So, okay, well, let's see if I can actually manage to get a pre-read going. Well, oh. Okay, on the spot. Right, so first of all, let's see if the G, right, I'm going to see if a GPI works. So GPI stands for General Purpose Interface, as I recall, and you can use a GPI to set one to trigger off the mixer to go to, to fire a wipe or a, a mix, as we call it. Um, you can see that's not quite working. It's doing something weird there, but let's see if we can get one going. So I guess you can either do it automatically could yeah, you, you can, or you do it manually. You do it manually, but you generally use the GPIs because... Uh, sorry, this is a bit boring for you because this, <laughs> this is my... But we'll move on. I'm trying to remember. But, um, Mark an in point at 2.30. Okay. And then let's see if I can get this to go. GPI, F1, GPI and record in. Yeah, it's there. And enter. So the GPI should work. So the first thing I'm going to do is just preview it and see if... Oh. Yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? Yeah, classic. Mark an endpoint also on the source deck. That is amazing, isn't it? Actually, to be fair, and if I think about it, I was using, um, and you used to whack the keys as well. You always <laughs> whack them. You do it with passion. Um, yeah. And it always, people always used to sort of seem like they're working really hard when they were like really bashing. Yeah, well, there was the always a classic one of uh, when the directors would ask you to change something and you didn't want to change it. So you type in really fast, one frame forward, one frame back. So you haven't done anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there we go. So we've got that going. So we've got an edit, but we haven't got the GPI working. Now, is the GPI set up? There is a way of getting it to just to test to see if the GPI is working. I think, I'm not sure on this one. This is so, oh God, it's going to be amazing to look back on this. I don't think the GPI is, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try a GPI on all of them. See if any of them do it. Record in, yes, enter. GPI three, record in, enter. GPI four, record in, enter. Let's see if I can get anything to work. Is this going to preview or is it going to do it? Just, oh, you, you think just go for it, do you? No, right. well, Hit the record button. No, Live awful. dangerously. Yeah, why not? So, and of course, this is the other thing. You have to wait every single time for a run up. Yeah. So, no GPI seems to be running. I've got a feeling that probably means they're not connected anywhere. So we can't really do a pre-read, I don't think. Well, the, actually, we could just do it manually. So if we, yeah, we can do the really horrible wipe. Excellent. All right, we're going for record. OK. Should we do it's some? bringing back memories, actually, just seeing things um, like pre-roll. <laughs> it's making me nervous. And then wipe through. It's a thing of beauty. Oh. Oh, what happened? That, that's, Is that just the end of the edit? No, that's, um, that's exactly what I thought. It's exactly the problem we had in, when I was in um, uh, Stockholm. The black and burst, the, what is it, the reference isn't quite there, and it probably means that, so it'll go through, and then it's Oh, play about what you did then. So there, see it crashes out there. Mm. That is because we've lost reference somewhere. One of the machines isn't quite locked to the other one. And we had this, and we could never get it working in Stockholm, so we just gave up. That's why we stuck with cuts all the time. Oh, so go. go through, it's beautiful, and then crunch. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and all, anything like that, drop out. Yeah, it's not actually a drop out. Oh, isn't it? it? It's, right. This is where... But it's, it looks like a drop, it's yeah. the same sort of thing. It, it, it looks exactly like it, oh. but it's actually because somewhere 
the machines aren't referenced. Do you remember that thing about um, we couldn't take um, tapes on the underground? I never knew if that was a myth or not. <laughs> it was, I think it was a great, the, the great excuse that because everyone thought that they'd get demagnetised and they'd yeah. lose all the information on them. Yeah, and we'd have like bits of dropout. Like, I'm sure it was just like some that. really clever runner somewhere who just went, <laughs> I want to take taxis everywhere. And, because that was a nightmare, you know, if you were everyone, you would have to make sure you've got your, your tapes on your lap, not on the floor. I'd never heard of it ever happening. No. <laughs> and, then, and then the more you went on the tube, the worse it was supposed to get, you know, with also, like no film or but something. But also you'd have the same thing now, because it's still the same thing if you take a hard drive on there. Yeah. It's still magnetised. Yeah. So, um, but it's never happened. But, but it is a great excuse. Yeah. Yeah, it was always... I'd forgotten about that. I used to be, I used to be a runner. And so I used to have to take tapes all when I was back at, I was working for a um, corporate company, Software Production Enterprises, who are no more, sadly. Um, and I used to have to take tapes all over the place, and we'd have to take the bus. Uh-huh, <laughs> the bus, yeah. <laughs> <That's my job. laughs> but also you had precious cargo, so. Yeah, it was great fun. As like an 18-year-old running around London taking tapes everywhere. You yeah. get to see all sorts of places. Okay. Should we move over? I think it's... <laughs> all right. So, uh -huh. Umatic. This Umatic is... machines, yay! So this should be you, isn't it, as an offline? Were you using Umatic? Yeah, we did use U Umatic, but oh my god, it looks, it looks... They look more complicated than I remember. I thought yeah. Umatic was really simple, and it's like you've got all these... Oh god. So, oh yeah, yeah tracking. Don't touch anything. Tracking. Do you remember tracking? I mean, they used to do it on VHSs, but you had to have it with the, the Umatics as well. Oh, let's have a look at the tapes. They're so big! Oh, the boxes. Look at this, okay. Minus four DU on these meters is equivalent to the oh, yeah, BBC so look, line-up these buttons, so... Oh, God, yeah, that plastic thing you pull out to stop them... You, stop so you, anyone recording over yeah. it. Highly, highly technical. Uh. Auto tracking, manual tracking, and I seem to remember that they wouldn't play... Yes, unless oh, they're yeah. out of remote. So you'd be locked if you're in remote. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> this controller is tempting. I'm looking at I like that. the fact that it's got two rather than your one Your wheel. single one, yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, I remember pressing. Oh, hang on. So oh. one will be play and one will be record. I think oh, the recorder... Hold on a sec. Oh, oh I don't have, have to got, stop have it. Have we got sound? Have you bro... You've broken it. Error. All right, is it this one? All right, hold on a sec. Oh, hang on. I've, really ta I've taken you out of remote. There you go. Oh, OK. Oh, it's this one, look. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> Spooling through tapes. Don't have to do that anymore. Oh. Right, and then this one's not going in. No, no, okay. that one's dead. So this would be the... That probably so a record deck, isn't it? Yeah, this is a recorder. So... so OK. Anyway, so there's just this great feeling of... I sort of stop that. I always miss that. I still miss it in a way with Avid. That you haven't got like a scroll wheel that you can do through down the timeline. Yeah, it's there was never one at a time, wasn't there? Yeah, it never worked as well though. No. There's a beauty to those scroll wheels. Oh, I like the sound of it as well. <laughs> yeah, it's much better than doing fast forward on Avid, which just goes. Yeah, it just. So you've got stop, rewind. It's rewinding. You can't see it. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a. But if you could see it, it'd be scratching the tape. Like there's no, there's a way. There you go. If you switch it to. Okay. Oh, there we go. But it wasn't remember. that. That was. Wasn't well, good there, was it? Because it was supposed to be taking. Like, Probably knocking the, the oxide tape off itself. the tape. Yeah. yeah. So, but still, we'll do it now. Um, There's a lot of tapes. <laughs> I just love it. I wish somebody was talking so we could hear the. Let's see. Let's see what we've got. Right, right, right. Go forward. I, think it, I don't think it goes fast if you press it twice. I can't remember. I seem to remember that as well from somewhere. Is that on the DigiBeater machine? I don't know, but that's once. It's just going to get faster and faster. Okay. So, yeah, and then... You see, I... So, okay, so you'd, you'd find your place on your... Oh, so you got... On your record. So this, it's a bit... It's similar to the, the 910, so you've got play in, record in, and play out and record out, and so you'd mark in... You've probably did you have the did you ever use this one? No, I don't think so. But I know that yeah. So you'd have your well, you'd find wherever it was you want your new shot to go yeah. in. Yeah. I'm just gonna see if I can find anyone talking. But you'd you'd um, yeah find the place where you want your new shot to come in, 
on here, so I want a new shot to come in there. Let me just play it. Ooh. Oh, there's a play. Um, I'm trying to remember if you would just mark in. Where's the mark in there? I think it's these. So you've got a, uh, well, there's an in and there's an out. Because you've been operating, oh, yeah. I've had a chance I to look my over. Glasses. I didn't need my glasses then. Right, so this is in, I want to go in there. Okay. No, I want to go in there. That's the recording, yeah, that should be it. Uh, and then I turn this, play this side, which should, that would show me the incoming shot. Mm. I put that wherever I wanted. And then I could do an auto edit. Can I do a preview? Yeah, preview. Try it, see what happens. In my preview. Maybe if we go to, because it's going, oh, hang on. What are you going to do? Are you going to do an assemble? Oh, right. Oh, <laughs> are you yeah. going to insert? Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten about all that. Oh, so you could, if you weren't on a stripe tape, you could do an assemble mm -hmm. edit. Theoretically, yes, you could, um, but it's just a lot slower. And if you go past it, if you go past your assemble out, then every time you'd have to rewind back to the the other side of it again, it just slows everything down. Yeah. But that should yeah. try. Where's your preview? Oh, is it there? Preview button? No. So this is when we'd have when our burnt-in time codes would come into. Yeah, you'd have burnt-in time. So on the Umatic, you'd be doing your like first your you'd be working out the edit, making your editorial decisions, and you'd have your the little time code. On there, and then you would go straight into jog. Look at that again. It's like muscle memory. Straight yeah. into jog mode, and you click, and you're there. And then you would list your time codes after you've done this. And look, this is I'm going through this. If you look at the time codes on it, this is why I'm talking about it not being frame accurate. Because you go through at six, unless there's a, a hole in this tape. Because we suddenly jumped to five twenty three to six oh seven, and I don't think there's a hole in the tape, and it's all, all over the shop. And you're going, okay, I'm going, I'm going forwards now, and then suddenly it'll jump backwards. Yeah, it's gone to 5.22, even though I've gone forwards. Do you remember sometimes you'd have, like, you'd have your time code here, and then the one, the burnt-in time code would be different up there, and you'd be going, like, what are you doing that? <laughs> yeah, which we one do have, like, I go one by? one frame out or something. Which is why when you then go to the online edit, yeah. that they, we'd have to just go, okay, that's not right, and we'd have to adjust, because I was the online editor. Yeah. How much adjusting did you have to do? Um... We didn't have to do that much. I mean, you'd just be looking at the frame and then you go, OK, we've got to slide it a few frames here and there. But, but it wasn't frame accurate. And so you'd be relying on this for an EDL, edit, edit decision list. Um, but it wasn't 100% frame accurate. So you'd have to go back and you'd have to adjust it. I think I was saying before about the Carter Unstoppable Sex Machine video that it was all completely out. And we had to do it all completely from scratch. So. Oh, I love it. The jog things, it's, it's, it's a thing of beauty. Those jog wheels, they really yeah. are. They're just, and again, as you say, like straight to that, time. the jog yeah. and the shuttle and the jog, and it's I'm just back. great, and it works really, really well. It's actually still better than Avid. But uh, no one's ever sort of... See, that's one of each frame, look. Yeah. And I just love the fact that you're just going, you're going, you're moving that, and the time codes aren't bearing any relation to it. They're close, no. about, about a second out. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I must have worked on Umatic for, a, well, I was going between Umatic and VHS as a freelancer for a few years, quite a few years. Um, when I was producing and directing, let me see, uh, 82, I think, 82, 85, 6 or 7, 8, 8, 9, I don't know, yeah, probably, I don't know, five years or something. But not one of these, because I, we, again, no. where I used to work, they had a, Umatic machine to machine, but it wasn't this one, it was much simpler. Yeah. This looks really, this is like high end Umatic machine. I don't know what all this is. I'm guessing that's audio. I'm guessing. That was the thing about when it went out of I'm sync. Even... Obviously, audio is a nightmare if someone's speaking and it goes out of sync. It must be I don't remember. I'm not even sure it's on. Oh, Have it you? is. Hang on. Now it is. I'm a bit Hello. scared. I think we're going to deafen this. All right. Um, no mic. Uh, let's just play. Oh, I can tell you what my eyes are. They're not as something. good as they were. No, I've never seen one of these before. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that's doing anything. Okay. Um, and to be honest, I'm quite glad it looks scary. Move on. Oh, look at this. Okay. What have you got? <laughs> no, it's just... I love the way they're dials. They're great, aren't they? I mean, it really is. That looks like something from the 70s. Yeah, we definitely didn't have one of those. <laughs> I assume you never worked with two inch. No. We had, where I used to work, we had a two-inch machine, but no one ever used it. 
it was sort of sitting there, and that's empty reel anyway, it was sitting there just in case um, anyone wanted to do any archive. I think they used it after I had left, and that one's empty as well, I can feel it. Um, but uh, they were huge. They were at least as big as this desk and horizontal, if not bigger. Um, <laughs> and I had no idea how you'd use, you'd use one of those. And I, can't, I think I can get this one open, but I don't think there's anything in it. I'm going to give up with that. That's not coming. <laughs> 